Hello and welcome back to another Bachelorette recap. I was traveling last week, so Asher and I were not able to break down the hometown visits, but we're back this week and we're gonna fly through both episodes. We're gonna be talking about hometowns, which really what you wanna talk about is Dean's hometown. We're gonna talk about that. And two, we wanna talk about the three guys meeting Rachel's family and how that went and predictions for what is to come because I think it's getting it's getting serious, and I'm afraid that Peter's going to get sent home. Whatever. Okay, right. let's, let's start with Hometowns. Asher, break down what we saw. Okay, so with Hometowns, we started with Eric, went home to Baltimore, um, saw that he kind of had a, a, a rougher life growing up, but he, ch you know, chose to do well in school and, mm -hmm. you know. A solid family, too. Solid family, and uh, Rachel was the first girl that he's ever brought home, and mm -hmm. that was kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um but, you know, and he was able to have this connection with his parents where they were like, sorry that we put you through a tough time, but you're a tough guy now, so that's great. Yeah, <laughs> I think Eric has done so much to win over people that weren't really sure how he got as far as he did right. within the past couple episodes. He is so authentic. I think that he, every time I see him on camera, I'm reminded that this, I wonder who submitted him for this show because mm -hmm. it seems so out of his comfort zone. That said, he is he has been rolling with it incredibly well. Mm -hmm. He came in with a healthy degree of skepticism. Right. Sort of wondering like, why is not she? Why is she always going on dates with Brian and Peter? It's pretty obvious who her favorites are. Why, are. why am I even here? This is a waste of my time. To really sort of been won over by the process. I also think that um, his his hometown, when he took Rachel to meet his family, it was really refreshing because you got mm -hmm. the same sense you get from Eric, which is like, this isn't, I kind of wonder how they got on this show, how they were yeah. submitted for it. doesn't seem like something they would do, but they took to it in the way that a normal American family would. Mm -hmm. And um, they did talk about race. I know that that was... Yeah, which is refreshing yeah. and great. And it'd be great to address be Address it. Yeah. It's why Please this season is getting it. so yeah. much news. It's because mm -hmm. she's the first black bachelorette. I know that some people would rather just pretend like, no, we've always been a super diverse show, but they haven't. And they finally yeah. are making some headway on that. We should talk about yeah, it. Yeah, and you know, not just like, oh, it's colorblind. We should all be colorblind. They're just actually saying like, oh, this is tough for you because someone's going to be mad at you regardless of who you pick. So, um, so that was really nice to see and nice to see how excited his mm -hmm. family was. To and how her. he's excited mm -hmm. to be with her. I think that um, he wasn't really sure about their connection aside from like, she's pretty, she seems fun. And mm -hmm. now we've really seen him grow to have a, have feelings for her mm -hmm. and that feels like one of the most uh like like authentic genuine i know i keep saying the same words that they always say uh <laughs> connections and now let's juxtapose that with brian right brian, brian. who brought his um they his went, girlfriend yes. i'm sorry mom i'm sorry <laughs> right uh went home to miami his side of Miami, met his very creepy mom, um, and he was weird. And that's it. That sums it up. His face, very unpleasant to look at. He's starting just, to really make me uncomfortable. There's something weird about it. His Instagram is still, I know that Instagram is such a superficial thing. It doesn't show real life at all. I'm going to be the first one to say that. But there's something weird about be a, a guy that's like 30-something years old mm -hmm. who is still using hashtags about stuff it's weird it yeah. shouldn't mean anything it's but it's like it's a symptom of what i think is an underlying problem with him that i think is just this lack of sincerity that bothers me there's this undercurrent i don't see why rachel can't see it because i feel like i can see it it's literally on his face i read an article somewhere that said we shouldn't be speculating on whether or not he has cheek implants and that is fine we shouldn't we can move on from but that i just told you just the title of that article yeah so <laughs> It doesn't matter, but it's fucking, he's, all this stuff adds up for him being so weird and something strange about it. I, we're, we're supposed to ignore superficial stuff that could be an indicator of, so, of something really not cool going on within him. Mm -hmm. He feels like he's the sort of guy that's going to snap in a Lifetime movie. That's a great description. Yeah. yeah, he's definitely like, he was the perfect man until he wasn't. And you know? straight up, if his, you know, when his mother dies, he's going to have like an Ed Gein shrine to her. Oh, true. Very true. Just a lot of mom furniture. Mm -hmm. A lot of mom Murder furniture. with friends. With Murder with friends. <laughs> the Bachelorette edition. Uh, so, so that was that. Brian's creepy, whatever. Let's mm -hmm. move on. Peter, his hometown. What did you think? Um... His hometown, I like how eight out of ten of his friends are black, apparently, um, which he'd like to point out. And um, But yeah, his family, uh, also very nice, made sure to let Rachel know that he is ready for a commitment, not necessarily 
uh, that he's ready for marriage. Yeah. It that he is ready to be a father and Rachel is stoked about that. Yeah, it was a little, it's a little strange where the, they, they asked the mom stuff where they were like, so she was like, is Peter ready for commitment? Absolutely, for the rest of his life? For sure. Does that mean marriage? No, maybe not. It's like, wait, what? Where did this go? Is he ready to be a father? Absolutely. Is he ready to have a mother of a child? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Single father. Like, He's ready to be a human for the rest it's a of lot his of, life. He, yeah. It's a lot of contradictions. Mm -hmm. um, that said, I think that, that just comes from a place of Peter also, another reason why I love him, having a healthy degree of skepticism about the whole process, similar to Eric. Right. I think Eric has sort of bought in a little bit now where he's like, okay, I've never been in love before. I do have these feelings for this girl. I could propose. Peter has been in love before. So I think what we see from Peter is this like, is this feeling of, okay, at the beginning of every relationship, you think about forever. It's mm -hmm. a totally normal oh, thing sure. to do. You think, can I picture myself with this person? Okay. That doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to work out. I'm sure that between you and I and between you guys, you can tell us about someone who, at the beginning of a relationship, you thought you could see yourself with them forever, and then for whatever reason life happens, it didn't work out. It doesn't mean that you still didn't feel that way at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what we're seeing from Peter, where he's basically saying, I have these feelings for Rachel. They are real. I want to acknowledge them. I want to see a future with her. That said, I don't know if that means marriage. How can you know? Right, yeah. After eight or nine weeks, you're not ready to get engaged. What's wrong with you, right? Right. And so. now, without further ado, let's talk about Dean. Deany baby. Poor, poor Dean. Dean in Aspen, Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the first time his whole family or his immediate family has been under one roof in eight years. First time that he saw his dad in two years. His dad is now a Kundalini yoga. Uh, has converted, is some and type of Sikh Kundalini person, um, and it doesn't go so great. Uh, Dean is very unhappy that there's not a table and chairs. Um, <laughs> and from there, you know, he like his dad bangs a gong, they do all these kind of symbolic things. Dean is just not happy. He's obviously kind of unsettled about the past. And Rachel wants him to talk about this. Right. He wants to have him kind of air it all out, have this connection with his father. Rachel was being a producer in Ugh. her date with Dean, and yeah. that's kind of what rubbed me the wrong way, Rachel. I feel like yeah. this, is, this is a real guy's family. I know it's a show yeah. for America, but this is a real family that's going through some real shit that is unresolved. And it mm -hmm. felt like this segment was very, and this is me saying this about The Bachelorette, was very overproduced, and yeah. there, there's a, there's a, a little bit of a slimy feeling surrounding this date because I think that they all knew it would be good television, mm -hmm. and it was, but it's also Dean's life. Yeah, and it's um, outside of the show. This has nothing to do with his. Really, doesn't have much to do with his relationship with Rachel. His relationship right. with his father following the death of his mother. Like, mm -hmm. come on. Yeah, it was a little too forced. Um, it was, and it was, it was just a painful to watch. And it, yeah. and then in the end, Dean got sent home. Well, and after he said, "I'm falling in love with you," Rachel says, "I'm falling in love with you too." Later. See ya. <laughs> what does that mean? That means I'm over. deuces. Yeah. Um, but then she said, "I don't know. I really don't like the treatment of Dean in this last episode. I'm hoping yeah. that he can have a great redemption story on uh, Bachelor in Paradise. I think that that's something yeah. he deserves because he comes across as a really sweet guy that just." A lot of his stuff got aired out on TV, and that's got to be weird. But mm -hmm. also, there is an argument. You put yourself in this position. You you know what show you're going on. Mm -hmm. um, you might not know the underbelly of that show, yeah. but whatever. Now we are at the most recent episode, which was uh, Rachel's sister can't travel. She's eight months pregnant. So uh, they met her family a week earlier than they typically would. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that it went well for all of them, save Brian. Right, yes. The family, yeah, Family loved Peter, loved Eric. Mm -hmm. Once again, gave their blessing in a very mm -hmm. obtuse way that they could, should the relationship come to that, you could ask for my daughter's hand mm -hmm. in marriage. Rachel's dad did not participate in the filming of the episode because uh, he is a he is a district judge, and that's just yeah not. Like, he took the uh, decent career advice. And, yeah, uh, Rachel didn't. You can't. You can't. <laughs> All do, right. You can't do that. Um, um, so it was just yeah. the mom and uh, her her brother-in-law and the uncle, that sort of thing. And Eric got the blessing. Peter got the blessing. I think Brian, did he get the blessing? I think he did, but no one believes that he loves Rachel. Yeah. And no one just believes that he's a genuine person. He, I, I don't think, yeah, I think everyone kind of quickly saw through his BS 
because they're also very genuine, just like Rachel. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it didn't go very well. No, it didn't go very well, and it was really refreshing to see someone call Brian out for his weird, smarmy behavior that comes across as very calculating. Finally. And I don't know why Rachel hasn't seen that. I have to sort of wonder if there are some producers in the back that... I, I, this is what I'm wondering. If they realize that Peter is their next bachelor, like he'd be a great bachelor. Mm -hmm. Brian would not be a good bachelor. People don't like him, mm -hmm. but he's a fine winner. And so I'm wondering if behind the scenes, the only people that Rachel is really in contact with during the taping period is, are producers. And knowing how a reality show works, have, having worked in it a little bit as a PA, I know that like there are producers that will produce their stars to sort of uh, sort of like mold their thinking in a certain direction and it kind of seems like that's happening with Brian because otherwise how is Rachel not seeing through this shit mm -hmm. it's he's full of shit he's just full of shit it's hard like it, no one it, no one talks or thinks that way and I know it's be like well you've never been in love like how would you know I mean I have been in love but you don't know their love you don't know their story yeah that's true but he hasn't done anything to sort of explain himself more than just like I can't help how I feel. Okay, Romeo, like mm -hmm. save it. I don't know. Am I just being a Scrooge? No. Okay. I think yeah. I think Peter or I think Brian rubs everyone the wrong way. Yeah, and I think they see star material in Peter. Mm -hmm. And that said, I predict that Eric will be going home at the end of this upcoming rose ceremony. I do too, which is a bummer because I feel like Eric is is just they you know they they spend the night at the fantasy suite together. They have a really cute date. He admits that he's falling in love with her. Um, I I just I think he's just really proven himself to be such a, a great genuine person. Yeah. And you can just tell she's not feeling it with him as much as she's feeling it, maybe sexually with Brian and emotionally with Peter. And yep. and then it ends with Peter, again not really saying that he can he's ready to propose yet, and that is really throwing Rachel off. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where we end the episode. That is where we end the episode. So I would actually like to amend what I said. Okay. I think bearing in mind what the, the preview for next week, what we have seen where she's saying, I'm not trying to leave here with a boyfriend. I think she might actually send Peter home and then for sure he's our next bachelor. And then mm -hmm. uh, go into the final week with Eric and Brian. And if it is the case, it's Eric and Brian the final, then we know that Brian wins. And I of course would like wish her to be happy, but I think Brian is is so gross. Maybe I'm just maybe I maybe I am a Scrooge about Brian. I don't know. Uh, do you have any final thoughts on this going into final three? Um, I I've switched over to either Team Peter, or Team Eric, basically Team anyone but Brian. I'm really pushing for her and the host to just like him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it's the final rose ceremony, and she's like, you know what? It was you all along. <laughs> yeah, it was you. What, what's his name? Chris, Chris. Chris Harrison. Chris Harrison. Chris Harrison. It was you. That's why I came back on this show. Right. Guys, we want to hear from you in the comments section below. What do you think about what is going on in The Bachelorette? Do you get a weird, icky feeling about Brian as much as we do? Are we being Scrooges about it? Maybe we are. Maybe. Who do you want to win? Who do you want to see as your next Bachelor? Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and we will see you next time on Pop Trigger.